Welcome everyone to today's Testum community event, our Ask Me Anything with Shweta Sharma, Director of QA Accelerant. For those of you that don't know this amazing leader, um, she's passionate about creating inclusive professional opportunities for continuous learning. She's a fierce advocate for mental wellness and scaling processes for leading quality teams. She has 13 years of demonstrated proficiency in test management, agile methodologies, and automated functional and visual regression testing. And when Shweta isn't at work, she's either on a family road trip across the country or she's dancing with her kids, uh, which is a great combination. Um, and you can follow her for more leadership and quality updates on LinkedIn and Twitter and we'll share that information in the chat below. She's definitely one to follow. Thank you so much for being here today with us. How'd I do on my, how'd I do on my intro? <laughs> that was a wonderful introduction. Thank you for that. Yes. And bang on, bang on. Yes, yes. I love that. Perfect. Um, so we have a lot of questions today and you know, when we had originally um, connected, I was, um, and I mentioned this to you in, um, previously in the green room, I was so inspired by your leadership and your experience, Accelerant, and how you went from being a QA engineer and working your way up and becoming a leader and becoming a director today and managing over 20 different diverse engineers. And I really just, I was so inspired by your story and I had to reach out to you. And when I reached out to you, the first thing he said was, listen, I'm passionate about mental wellness. This is a really important topic to me. I want to talk about this in our session. And I was like, who is this person? Who is this person? So in addition to the topics we'll be covering today, I wanted to say thank you for holding a space um, to talk about this during this time. Can you maybe tell us a little bit about why this topic is so important to you? Yeah, sure. So almost around uh, three years ago, I was also suffering from some sort of uh, depression, not even being aware of uh, what I'm going through, right? Although I was doing my work diligently and of course the quality that I raised from my outputs and all was fine, but there was something that I wasn't feeling good about. There were thoughts about uh, quitting my professional career, right? There's always this, uh, being a mother, there's always this guilt that you carry okay, probably you're not paying enough attention to your kids. But then the reason that I came back from my maternity break, a year long maternity break to my professional career was that I wasn't happy just being a mother, right? Then why am I feeling, uh, why am I not feeling happy about my professional things? And uh, yeah, so three years ago when I went through it and I had very uh, extreme thoughts of uh, quitting my professional career and uh, feeling almost worthless, right? Um, so that's when I reached out for help. So that's that's the number one reason why I wanted to talk about mental wellness. I consider myself as a strong personality. And if a person like me can go through uh, such a phase in her life, I think anybody can go through that. Yeah. I really, I really appreciate you sharing that and holding a space for this today. And we're gonna talk a little bit more about mental wellness as a theme throughout these questions. Um, because part of what we talked about before, you and I, is about how mental wellness, when we are at our best, um, we are able to give back to ourselves and others, produce better quality work for our teams, and also produce um, a better quality of life for ourselves. And, you know, I think that's part of the reason why so many people were excited about this talk today. And we did have quite a few questions submitted. So if it's all right with you, we're gonna come back to this topic as well, but we're gonna continue and ask a few other questions kind of regarding that leadership. Um, one of the questions that we had was, what skills and values as a leader do you believe are the most important that contributed to your professional growth at Acceleron? Yeah, so the number one skill has to be empathy. I uh, keep talking about it. Uh, empathy was uh, something, again, that was introduced to me at TechDeliverance around four years ago. And uh, that changed a lot of things, how I started viewing that uh, problems, how I started uh, viewing people and their problems and then the solutions. So empathy is way better than sympathy because with empathy, you actually put yourself into the other person's shoes and uh, understand their problems to provide a solution that they will be able to cater to. That's the number one. Uh, the second uh, quality would be honesty and integrity. 
like you have to be honest with yourself you have to be honest with your team members the third would be respect no matter what position uh, the individual is in right it could be a junior engineer it could be the senior most engineer or even a c level executive uh, if you want respect you should give respect and that should start coming naturally to you non sharing and communication is so important Just turn the video off for a second. Turn it back on. I love this. Number two, uh, share their knowledge. If, courage. Yeah, have have you, you need to gather enough courage. So what I mean by courage here really is that uh, you need to stand and own to your own mistakes. It's not easy when you start climbing up the ladder. Trust me. Right. Uh, start owning small, less smaller mistakes. start owning those mistakes one on one and uh, learn from your mistakes and just just gather enough courage when it comes to owning mistakes you also need to have enough courage to embrace your ideas your team's ideas right you need to give them that space and then and that room wherein they speak about their ideas and you also give them that time and make that provision wherein the entire team can go ahead and implement those ideas that needs enough courage as well gratitude again oh my god i mean uh, practicing gratitude has given us wonderful results throughout excellence start acknowledging start appreciating your team members for their smallest achievements and personally i feel when you appreciate your team members publicly that has a bigger impact when you do it in person at excellent we uh, we use uh, we use an application called seven views wherein uh, we recognize our peers for their work and you know at excellent we have these three values core values which is kindness openness and enthusiasm so our recognitions are closely tied to these of uh, these core values so be it uh, something that is related to the project work be it if someone has helped someone on a personal level or a professional level right or uh, anything right so we recognize our peers openly publicly and of course we have those slack integrations in place as well uh, where everyone rest of the team members would go ahead and react to those uh, public recognitions it really makes one feel good when you receive valuable recognitions from your team members and the last would be trust of course this is the most difficult part because uh, it cannot be developed in one day we all are aware of that give yourself time give your team members the time to uh, create that bond to create that trust uh, do not expect anything that would happen overnight on this front and uh, i i've written one line in my excellent freedom document is that uh, one needs to practice these values day in day out whether you know irrespective of the environment they are in right just because you are working in an office you practice these values and suddenly you do not practice this when the same people are not there right that doesn't really happen because that hasn't happened with me when i started reading about these topics uh, what i faced was that <laughs> i started talking in a certain manner to my husband to my mother <laughs> right it's so difficult of course like what i mean to say is that these values uh, start coming into you automatically and you start practicing them everywhere which is a huge advantage because when it comes to empathy i think my kids have benefited the most apart from my team members <laughs> so i really appreciate that and i think that's part of it right is that when this started um everyone was you know we were hoping people would become more empathic and i and, you know and we were seeing some of that for sure and then i think people started to get a little bit more fatigue and the one thing i'm always telling leaders and i'm talking to them you know is i'm like 
lean into those values at your company. They're not just there for recruiting to pick people up for new candidates. You wrote those values, they're on your website. Have a recommitment to them, have a renewed commitment during this time. You know, it's really important to lean into them because you created that structure. So go for it. If you're looking for guidance, y'all, you already wrote it. If you don't have those values, you might want to write some. So I really appreciate you sharing some of your own for your team. Um, and we talked a little bit about the values there, which I really appreciate. Um, I want to talk a little bit in switching gears, because one of the things that I've loved um, in our conversations for you and I is you talk about bringing clarity to roles and you talk about how you've created continuous learning opportunities for your teams. Can you talk a little bit about some concrete examples about what that looks like? Um, because, and correct me if I'm wrong, um, your, your company is incredible in that like when it comes to, you know, a remote work culture, this is something y'all have been doing for a long time now. And I think so many of our leaders um, who are trying to provide continuous learning opportunities, they're looking for leadership and like y'all have already been doing it and you specifically around bringing clarity and around professional growth. Can you talk a little bit more about that? Yeah, again, this is, this is so important uh, that you need to have your, the roles and responsibilities clearly documented for all levels in your team. I remember uh, a year ago when I was promoted to being the director of QA, there, there wasn't any document as such. And like day one after the promotion happens, I log in as usual. I don't really have a client project to work on, right? And I'm like, okay, what am I supposed to do today? So that's, that strikes you really hard when there isn't anything documented uh, as such. Of course, when, when there is a client project given to you, you still know that, that you have some Jira tasks. There are some stories, there's a sprint going on. You know, you know your work, right? But, uh, but, but I, I, I'll tell you uh, again, again, something that happened with my um, one of my QA team members is that I was telling her, she's been again associated with Exilerant for over five years and she's, she's a fantastic QA. She always earns praises uh, from the clients for her QA and all. And I, keep, I used to keep telling her because I've been her mentor for some time now. I used to keep telling her that you need to, you need to work beyond what you have been doing now, right? You need to go that extra mile, learn new skills, right? She got so confused, she came to me and she told me that learning new skills, skills, you know. We'll get there, don't you worry. Yeah. Can you just, Shweta, can you go right back to learning new skills? Yeah, so learning new skills. So that is such a broad spectrum, right? If you just, if you just give this as a goal to someone, learn new skills, raise the bar for yourself. Oh my God, I mean, you could be talking from like really Mars to Venus or Mars to in fact Uranus, right? Or even Mars to Pluto, that, that spectrum could range from anywhere, from one planet to another. Um, and that's when uh, I started documenting roles and responsibilities, mapping it with the skills document that we have now. So we have a skills mapping sheet wherein we have identified various QA skills, technical skills, agile skills, and test automation skills. And uh, we have uh, identified what a person say probably at QA L1 needs to, what kind of competency or expertise do they need to have? Do they need to, do they just need to be familiar? Or is their knowledge something which is at intermediate level or do they need to be experts? Right. So we started with identifying the skills mapping sheet where we asked our people to rate themselves. We wouldn't be rating them. Rate yourself so that you identify where you lack. Right. And then we created a roles and uh, responsibilities document, which was based on uh, the RASPI factor, which is the responsibility, accountability. Right. And that was more on the behavioral uh, aspect of the person. So we have combined this technical skills mapping sheet with the behavioral skills uh, for the person to identify themselves what are their roles and responsibilities, wherein everything is clearly defined what a person at L2 or L3 is responsible for, accountable for, and uh, if 
if they're talking about skills, they have the sheet in front of them on what skills uh, they need to work on. Of course, these skills would uh, might differ from organization to organization. And as a leader, it is important that uh, the skill sheet that you create is aligned with the organizational goals. That's super, super helpful. And I think that kind of concrete example is creating that clarity around new people's roles and giving them a path to their next step is so key. Um, I can't tell you how many new managers I've talked to out there and they're just like, this is my first time, someone help me. What um, resources would you recommend to those leaders that are looking to become better advocates for professional growth for their teams? Okay. Uh, before I answer that question, sorry about that. I, I just forgot that there was another part to your previous question about uh, how do you instill continuous learning opportunities? Yeah, so uh, there were several ways uh, how we successfully created this culture of continuous learning uh, because these are tried and tested methods, so I can boast about it openly now. Uh, around almost three to, I, um, I think four years ago, we started this concept of learn clubs, right? If you haven't heard of learn clubs, right? We started this concept of learn clubs wherein uh, the learn, the, every learn club, uh, first of all, there would be separate topics. Like we had a learn club for, uh, for an automation tool for called we had, then there was, there, there are learn clubs going on for JavaScript. Then there's learn club going on for the, yeah, so we have these different learn clubs wherein we have um, the main the main organizer of the learn club and then we have mentors in the learn club. Um, and so so when it came to QA, uh, we have was the first learn club that was successful within organized within auxiliary, wherein uh, the mentors had the opportunity. So the, these mentors were someone who were like uh, decently experienced with the tool because they had tried it on actual projects and they had given enough time to learn and uh, they had to then further share their learning with the entire organization and people who were interested in learning that tool joined the joined the particular slack channel and uh, they used to have like one session per week more than a session i would call it as a workshop right uh, wherein uh, I mean, we had several workshops for several weeks like right from uh, the understanding of the tool to the installation to some basic scenarios and all of that right so we started organizing these workshops to learn clubs so what that did was the people who were who were as uh, acting as mentors and who were conducting workshops they had this brilliant opportunity uh, to improve their presentation skills and it is known to everyone that when you are supposed to teach something you learn it in a better fashion that was one uh, benefit or that was one of the outcomes. The second outcome was that we, uh, we got the majority of people uh, get started immediately with we had because that was something we were widely using at uh, Exhilarant, our clients were using. And we didn't have to wait uh, for a very long time for people to upskill to that particular tool. So a large number of people were upskilled uh, in parallel with learn clubs. Uh, the second was uh, that we recently did in the last quarter was uh, a testing hackathon on API testing. So like it was um, automated API testing. The idea that uh, the idea uh, had struck me just because uh, I had started sensing that after the pandemic, you know, I mean, of course, people were people were going through some issues because of the social cutdown and they were looking to collaborate with each other. They were looking for chances where they could talk more to each other. Uh, because what happens at Exhilarant is usually uh, the QA team works on different client projects and, and there's just one QA on every client project. So they, they, feel, they feel that they are disconnected and I could feel that the QA team is, they feel that way. So the objective of this hackathon was, uh, or I would say the objectives were to bring the team back together and make them feel as one exhilarant QA team. And um, 
of course when you work in a group right with all that uh, with all that dynamics that is involved when multiple people are involved best of everyone comes to the table and uh, i think so that worked wonderfully wherein the, the testing hackathon went for the entire quarter and the team enjoyed it thoroughly and they were so eager for the next hackathon that <laughs> after the hackathon was over of course they were extremely happy with the learning that they had they, we had winners but then they were more eager to collaborate on the next topic and uh, work on a new skill so you have to find out creative ways because you know since we all work remotely now excellent has been working remotely forever right if you again it's 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 difficult for humans to not get bored just sit at home and learn a skill the pace is not going to be the same as when it comes to when fun is added with learning so these were just like a couple of things that we tried out and worked really well i love that and i love those concrete examples and i think so many people are looking for that right now they really are looking for guidance and so you all have been ahead of your time and for all of us working remotely so this is super super helpful um we have a great deal of questions rolling in here and i'm here for it so before if you're down for a little rapid fire this is the fun part um before we do that i want to go right back to mental wellness just before we go into these questions real fast what would you say, what would be your top three quick recommendations for leaders right now that are trying to improve empathy and kindness and address people's mental wellness needs on their team and their own, and their own too? What would be your top three? One is uh, create a provision uh, in your organization where people could raise these topics, right? Do you have a provision where people could even talk about their mental illness? If no, you need to create that platform where people start uh, speaking openly about it. Yeah, these are like uh, the real facts of working from home. So yeah, he wants a hug probably every 30 minutes. Oh, hello. Hello. Yeah, uh, so create a platform. And uh, of course, you'll have to ensure their psychological safety while you create that platform. That is so important. Otherwise, people are just not going to open up. At Exilerant, we have a life coach. I think, I, I don't even remember from when she is there. I think from the time I've joined, she's been there. We have a wellness coach, a life coach, who has been contributing to Exilerant like no one other, none other, right? So she has played uh, an immense role in, um, in helping us create an opportunity, talk about this. And I, as I mentioned three years ago, when I myself was suffering for it, uh, I went to her, I spoke to her. So you, the, the thing is create a provision, be it uh, a platform that you leaders can use uh, or probably you all can uh, hire wellness coaches, mental uh, life coaches in your organization. And I think it's, it's a wonderful addition to have in your organization especially in these days. I love this. Um, I'm just making a quick note to everybody. Um, Y'all, we've been doing these AMAs and um, every single time I'm like, why do we schedule them for just 30 minutes, Tristan? But part of it is because, you know, everyone is super busy and tired and dedicating an hour is a lot to ask of anybody. So we keep them short, sweet in 30 minutes. But y'all have sent me now over 19 private and public questions. <laughs> I love this. So um, if we cannot get to all of your questions today, um, what we'll do is we will, um, I sent the link for y'all to sign up for the testing community. It's free, it's low key. We don't market, we don't spam. I'm not here for that. I'm the worst marketer ever. <laughs> it's all about continuous learning and just connecting y'all with each other. And you're like, one more Slack community? I can't. I promise it's worth it. It's a lot of fun. Um, we're all about automation. We're also all about, sometimes we have plank challenges for exercise. So come as you are, we'll continue the conversation. Shweta has been incredible and I'll post this recording there. I wanna do a quick rapid fire, Shweta. Are you, are, you, are you ready? All right, we're not gonna get to all of them, but we're gonna do our best to get a few of them. So I have a few questions. The first one real fast. Um, uh, as an interviewer, what are the top three things you qualities that you expect to see in a tester? Communication, um, 
analysis and um, learn abilities. Love that, love that. We're moving on to the next one. How, what recommendations do you have for um, successfully setting up a QA in a startup? Okay, you'll have to understand your organization's needs and uh, then create the framework accordingly. Just do not go because some Fortune 500 company has taken that up because we've scaled from uh, having two QAs to now 20 QAs. We have, we have uh, evolved only as per our needs to achieve love, faster success. I love that. Um, and we'll again post these questions if people want to continue and ask it, gonna dive in a little bit more. I have another one here. You mentioned documentation. How do you make sure the documentation in your company is always up to date and easy to navigate for people who look for a certain type of, or piece of knowledge? I'll, I'll give a quick example. Uh, we have something called as QA onboarding document. Uh, wherein uh, since we work remotely and uh, I have to use my time in an optimized fashion, right? I have this QA onboarding document and at the end of the documentation, I have written one sentence. If you feel that something is outdated in the document or something needs to be updated, something needs to be better, uh, reach out to me and we'll ensure that the document is updated. I mean, that, that was just about the onboarding thing. But when it comes to in a project, of course, um, there is no foolproof method. It, it needs to, uh, it needs to, the importance of having the right documentation that needs to be spread to the team. I love that, I love that. Um, and one, and I have another one here real fast. I really appreciate you taking these extra few ones here. Um, how do you measure when the work is done by, by QA, um, be it for productivity or annual appraisal? Hmm. Okay, coincidentally, just today, I have started working on the promotion formula. When it comes to appraisal, we have our KPI set for now, which is uh, uniform across the organization, across all departments. Our first KPI is uh, the NPS, which is the net promoter score from the clients. That is to promote working as a team together. And that's why we do not uh, uh, measure or uh, we do not measure our employees' individual performance because we promote working as a team together. Uh, second uh, KPI is our time logging, uh, which is but obvious that you need to spend a certain amount of time every week on uh, working on your project. And if you're not on a project, then we have something called as beat, wherein the tasks are created for you to work on your skills, and which are again, of course, uh, aligned with the organization goals. And we have one more KPI, which is knowledge sharing. So the third KPI, knowledge sharing, uh, comprises of writing blogs, then uh, posting GitHub repositories, and talking at events. So any any form of knowledge sharing in the community. So that's how we identify the appraisal percentage. I love that last KPI so much. I think that's so important. If you know something, say something, share it. You know, I think so many people like to keep their cards to themselves or they're afraid of other people, you know, criticizing their work. And I'm always like, get someone else to read it. I'll read it, y'all. I'll proofread it. You know, I'm like, I'm not the most technical queen out there, y'all, but I can write, okay? Like, send me, send me your essay, send me your blogs. Like, let's start blogging more. Um, let's start presenting more and sharing that knowledge. I think it's so important. One quick last question, I promise. It's the last one, you're so kind. Um, I'm a junior QA. Uh, I will be starting a new position next week. Congratulations. Um, could you share some suggestions for how to adapt to a new environment quickly and effectively? It's a great question. Okay. First of all, uh... I mean, I don't know, why do you want to do it quickly? I think that would be being a bit harsh on yourself because I, I feel that I am sort of similar and I keep realizing that's being harsh on yourself. Give yourself time everywhere to settle down. Set the right expectations. I think that would make your journey smoother right from the beginning, which is setting the right expectations uh, to your manager, to your leaders and to your team members. I love that. I think that's such a good way to wrap this conversation and thinking about how we're setting expectations for ourselves and for others during this time of working remotely, but also during 
a global pandemic and all the other factors that are going on in our lives. And I wanted to say, Shweta, um, being able to hold a space to talk about um, being an empathic leader, caring about your teams, providing clarity around their roles um, and paths for professional growth, and also giving them these continuous learning opportunities, and all the while being an advocate for mental wellness. Like, I just, I look up to you as a leader, and I'm just so thrilled that you hosted and had this space today. So thank you, thank you. Is there anything, if you, if there's any parting words that you would say to this global audience? I would say, uh, I think this global pandemic has made us realize that how, how much humans we are, even though we are technologists, how, how much humans we are. So uh, practice empathy as a leader, as a tester, as a manager, whatever position you are. Uh, but don't forget, end of the day, we have our jobs to do. There's an organization that needs to run. And uh, hence, if there's anything that comes between you and your work, so especially mental wellness, uh, find someone whom you can talk to so that your work is not impacted. And this doesn't act as one of the hurdles for your professional success, right? Because end of the day, we have our ends to meet and there's an organization to run. That would be my practical advice. Yeah. I love that. I love that. And thank you so much for sharing time today. Um, again, for anyone who is watching, we continue to have more conversations with us in the testing community. We've got tons of great leaders, events. We talk about everything from automation to leadership. We are always posting new roles that are open. Um, it's just a fun community to relax and hang out and share best practices. If you're a Testum customer, we have some extra VIP private channels for you. So either way, come out, come see us. The information will be in the link down below this video. And Shweta, again, thank you. Everyone who's watching, be well, stay blessed. Um, and we so appreciate you attending today. Take care. Bye. Thank you so much. Thank you. Bye. Bye.